level of scrutiny, no, sir. What is the difference between uh, explain to me why you don't think the guns were walking? You obviously thought that others had that. Mr. Chaffetz, could you summarize? Oh, my apologies. I'm way over. I'll Thank the gentleman. We now go to the gentleman from Vermont, Mr. Welsh, for five minutes. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Newell, I am also trying to just understand the sequence here that uh, uh, some of my colleagues were asking about. As I understand it, agents would watch uh, a, uh, uh, a, a, a straw purchaser purchase guns, correct? <clears throat> they would follow the straw purchaser and come some places to another location where they would observe that the guns were left, correct? Left. Yes, sir. I believe. Well, they were they were dropped off by the straw purchaser and delivered to whoever the middleman was, right? Yes, sir. All right, and then on a couple of occasions, uh, the agents called in uh, for permission uh, to make an arrest, and they were denied that permission because of the overall objective of the plan. Correct? I'm aware of that in one instance. Yes, sir. All right. So the question I have, and I think uh, Mr. Burton and Mr. Issa were asking this, <clears throat> what procedures did you have in place? to follow where the guns went from that point where they were dropped off to wherever they ended up? Well, I know we had surveillance teams out there that were, their job was to do that, yes, sir. No, but what, I mean, you have got a report. I mean, I am an agent. I observe a straw purchaser. I watch the purchaser go to a delivery point. So the next step is following the guns from that delivery point to wherever they may end up. Now, I understand how this plan worked yes, from the point of watching the straw purchaser make the purchase, watching the straw purchaser make the drop, but I don't understand what happened after that or what your system was in order to follow where those guns went. Well, sorry, it, it wasn't my system. It was uh, decisions that were made in the field by dedicated agents to determine. No, no, I don't want to. Uh, there has got to be a system. What is the system, whoever system it is? Well, agents in the field do the best they can to follow firearms, follow loads, and see where they are going. And no, I, mean, I, 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 I don't get that. You, it, it, train law, you guys have plans, right, about how you are going to execute a complicated and very dangerous situation. So I am just wondering what it is. A load of assault rifles has been delivered to a middleman. Was there a explicit plan by which you would follow where those guns went after the drop to the middleman? Best of my knowledge, we did everything possible to, in fact, do that with the, with the resources we had out in the field. Right. But I am asking how you did it. With surveillance, with agents in, on the ground, boots on the ground. Well, if you had boots on the ground, how is it that you wouldn't know where those guns went from the drop? to the next step? Because in some instances, guns would go to a home, and unless we had any, law, unless we had any lawful basis to approach those individuals, we sat on surveillance as much as resources would allow, and then other priorities would, other cases, other, would take them away from that house. All right. So then basically, uh, there was not either the resources to follow those guns from the drop to wherever they ended up? Not in every instance, but in some instances, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ledman, in your testimony, you discussed the 2007 Project Gunrunner. Uh, you highlighted the strategic mission of the ATF and the need to cooperate with domestic and international uh, law enforcement partners to deny the tools of the trade to the firearms trafficking infrastructure. Uh, can you clarify one important issue about what happened? Do you have an opinion that it was a mistake in this operation uh, to focus on the Mexican cartels, the criminal organizations that are trafficking firearms? Or was it a mistake uh, or a failure to prior prioritize public safety as ATF targeted the cartels? Uh, it is not an opinion. It is my observation. Mm -hmm. What I will say is that the, I think there is a term here, everybody said let these guns walk. I personally believe our agents walked away from the guns as they were traveling down the road, similar to seeing something off at a train station. Um, to skirt around this to me is, is ludicrous. These, um, these firearms, right, like I testified earlier, were crime guns, murder weapons. We knew it in 2009. We knew that based on our information out of Mexico. We knew where these guns were ending up by our partners in Mexico. 
down there recovering them and researching them. There is no doubt that this was going to a criminal organization as early as 2009. As every day went on thereafter, it became more and more, uh, um, more and more substantiated. My thing here is we are talking about lawful ways of, of uh, arresting or going in. We have a, we have a uh, obligation to the Mexican people and the U.S. government and the citizens of the United States. There are other ways to stop the flow of guns other than arresting people. You can go and seize the guns. You don't have to arrest them. You can approach the people, right, and put an obstacle in front of them so they will stop the purchase of these firearms. Instead of allowing thousands of guns to be purchased, and try to tie the cases to make it a big case because you've got big numbers. What we should have done is broke these people down as they came up before we let these guns go south, and then through our intelligence assets and through our hard work of our other agents and networking from the other divisions, we can tie these cases together and go after and get the big people. That is how our law enforcement partners do it, and that is how we should do it. Okay, thank you. My time has expired. I yield back. Thank you. I thank the gentleman. We now go to the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Special Agent Newell, uh, you said firearms are not in and of themselves contraband. That is true unless they are sold to, possessed by, or acquired by a prohibited person, which would include a uh, straw purchaser. So my question to you is this. Did ATF have contemporaneous or pre-knowledge of any straw purchasers purchasing weapons in Arizona? Well, sir, straw purchasers are not prohibited individuals unless they have been convicted of some crime. No, it is against the law to purchase a gun knowing you are going to transfer it to someone else right. to therefore get around the fact that the person you are going to give it to is a prohibited person. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that is a straw purchaser. Someone who is going to give the gun to a prohibited person is a straw purchaser. Yep. So now that we have got that cleared up, did you know that anyone who was, who was acquiring firearms from firearms dealers in Arizona were straw purchasers, contemporaneous with the acquisition? Did ATF know it? We have to prove that, in fact, that is a violation. Yes, sir. We, have, we presented to the U.S. Attorney's Office evidence that we believe that these individuals were, in fact, straw purchasers. Well, let's, let's do it another way. The very first weapon recovered in Mexico through a trace. Did you go back to the purchaser of that weapon and interrogate them? I did not, no, sir. Did anyone with ATF? I am not aware of that, no, sir. Why not? I, I don't know, sir. You have got a gun that was purchased in Mexico, that purchased in the United States that makes it into Mexico. You know through your trace that that is the gun. Did you go back to the person who purchased it? That is that's an old-fashioned investigative technique. It is not as complicated as letting guns walk. It is more effective, though to actually go interrogate the person who made the acquisition. Did you do that? Well, sir, as I stated earlier, in this investigation, realizing that if you take off one straw purchaser, you are not making an impact on the greater invest in the greater organization. Right. I want to ask you about the greater investigation, because yes. I have written down four different times you have said disrupt, dismantle, destroy. Yes, sir. Um, how are you going to extradite drug kingpins from Mexico? We don't have plans to do that, no, sir. So once the guns make it to Mexico, there is nothing you were going to do about those drug kingpins? Yes, sir, there was. What? One of the things we wanted to do was as soon as we had solid information on who the drug kingpin, if you will, was, to share that information with Mexico. But you didn't share the information with Mexico ahead of time. Well, sir, we did. So they are supposed to trust American law enforcement who has been conducting an investigation and knows firearms are going into Mexico, and you tell them after the fact? And they are supposed to thank you and be partners in this endeavor? Well, sir, it wasn't only until we had information on who the specific recipient or the drug kingpin was that we felt it was prudent to share that information because we weren't How sure. are you going to dismantle Mexican drug cartels if you are not going to extradite the kingpins back to the United States? Because we hope that the Mexican officials will, in fact, prosecute them for that. So you are doing this to help the Mexican criminal justice system. You are just not going to tell the Mexican criminal justice system about it. No, sir, I disagree with that premise. Well, that's exactly what you just said, Special Agent, no. that you were going to tell them about it after the fact. Well, we didn't. We had to know it first. We had to know who the drug. We had to, through this investigation, and as it continued. Okay, you got the first trace that tells you a U.S. gun is, is found in Mexico. 
Why did you not go interview the person who acquired the gun? Why not do the investigation the old-fashioned way, with car stops, with search warrants, with active surveillance? Because Why do it this way? It was never going to work. Well, again, years of experience have shown us, sir, that removing one straw purchaser will not have an effect on a larger investigation. Well, Special Agent, the sure. only way it possibly could have worked would have been if Mexico had extradited these kingpins. If you want to disrupt, dismantle, destroy, the only way it could work is if you told Mexico, or I, I would have settled for you just telling your own fellow agents about it ahead of time, because ATF and Mexico didn't know about it, did they? Well, sir. Yes or no, did Mexico ATF office know about this? They were aware of the investigation, yes, sir. They were aware that weapons were going into Mexico and you knew about it? That we knew about it? That, sir, weapons go into Mexico all the time. From straw purchasers that you knew about? Well, let me ask you this. If Mexico were to ask us to extradite the law enforcement officers who knowingly aided and abetted weapons going into Mexico, what would your reaction to that be? I would explain to them that our, our concern in an investigation of this type is to just to take off the whole organization so we have the greatest impact possible. And not, if you just take off one straw purchase, you are not having an impact on the greater effort, which is to Special take Agent off Newell, my, my time is up. I will just say this in conclusion. I, I worked with ATF for six years directly. I worked with ATF indirectly for 10 years as just a State DA. This is one of the saddest days in my six months in Congress. It may be the saddest day. ATF has a wonderful reputation in South Carolina. We never once contemplated letting firearms walk, ever. A first-year Quantico or Glencoe person knows that. I will yield back. I thank the gentleman. We now recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Speer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Special Agent Newell, what were you thinking? I think that is what we are all scratching our heads about here today. And the embarrassment that you have put on ATF generally, an outstanding organization of line agents, is deeply troubling to all of us. But what I am really concerned about is but for the fact that there were whistleblowers, but for the fact those whistleblowers went to Senator Grassley, but for the fact CBS did an investigation, this travesty would still be going on today. That is my big objection. Who did you tell? Did Mr. Melson know about this? About the investigation? Yes. My belief is, yes, he did. I briefed him. And I know no, when him. did he know about it? When you started it? When you were conceiving it? I am not exactly sure when the first time he was made aware of the investigation, ma'am. Well, who did you make aware of this idea of this investigation? Well, when the, when the investigation first, first initiated, and I believe in November, we sent up, I sent up a briefing paper. We sent up a briefing paper, I believe, the first part of December. And then to whom? To my supervisor. Who is? Mr. McMahon. And, Mr. McMahon, what did you then do? When I was briefed on the initi initiation of this investigation, I pass it up the chain. But uh, this was an initiation of an investigation. We, we had a pretty early on, that is why the title of Fast and Furious came on, that we had a, a, a large group of people that were buying a lot of guns in a, a short period of time. And then we were having recoveries in Mexico. What we had was purchases in the U.S., recoveries in Mexico. We didn't have what was in between. And that is what 